Hello, hello, and happy Wednesday. It is habit therapy, so it's Wednesday. It's a chill place to heal, and I am your fitness coach and coach presenter, presenting coach for today. Um, we are going to be talking about moving intentionally. So if you don't know, November is Diabetes Awareness Month, and Fit and New is all about reducing the risk of chronic preventable diseases such as diabetes. Um, we, we even had a program called Fit Over 30 that was focused on helping women of color uh, reduce their chances of uh, getting diabetes. Um, so this is our month. This is the month where we really bring awareness to diabetes and help you prevent it in a number of ways. Um, since I am the head fitness coach of Fit New, of course, fitness is going to be the focus for, for me. Um, however, Jocelyn spoke last week about nutrition. And then next week for Habit Therapy, we have a special guest coach, Dawn Wood Sapp. She's a licensed massage therapist who is gonna talk about the benefits of ma massage therapy for diabetes or for diabetes prevention. So thank you for joining. Um, this is going to be in, interactive. So I hope that you're in a space where you could stand up, move around. This is a great time to just kind of shake, shake off all of the things from today that may have been weighing you down and just to get moving if you haven't gotten your movement in for today. All right. Um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to drop it in the comments section, um, and I will do my best to address them as I go through this, this presentation. Um, you can always come back to this recording as well. So if there's something that comes up after the fact, feel free to drop it in the comments, and one of our coaches will be sure to reach out and respond directly into the comments there. But thank you again for joining and let's talk about moving intentionally. So I'm gonna share my screen here. In the meantime, if you are in the comments, let me know how y'all are feeling today. How has your week been going? Have you been moving? That's a big question. We're halfway through the week. What has your movement been like this week? So I love the idea of, um, you know, when a movie scene is about to start, when they're recording it and they are like action and everybody knows to take their places and that and to be on and to activate all that they practiced before and to perform. That is kind of the same idea in feeling and uh, kind of way that I pursue uh, movement and fitness. It's kind of like when you've been going through the mundane process of just kind of working and sitting nonstop staring at a screen, you need something or someone to just kind of come in and say, okay, action. It's time to move away from uh, what you've been doing to take action, be proactive into getting move moving and to just shaking things up. Um, so what does that look like getting more active? Well, we're going to talk about the purpose of getting more active, some ways to get more active and how to track more details about your fitness. So first things first, if you have a smartwatch or a smartphone, I want you to set a 20 minute timer. Um, granted this, this presentation is only 30 minutes long, but set a 20 minute timer. And when that 20 minutes goes off, we are going to stand if we're not already standing and we're going to stand for eight and then move for two. So that's going to be our plan for this full 30 minutes while I'm presenting. This 28-2 rule is the um, activity that I like to encourage any and everyone to do, no matter if I'm presenting to um, a corporate audience or to my clients. Um, this is a great way to just start practicing on a daily basis, 
just changing from sitting consistently to standing and moving. So for every 20 minutes that you sit, you're gonna stand for eight and move for two. And we'll go over some things as far as what movement can look like. It doesn't have to be like a full blown routine, um, literally just moving, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and set my watch here for 20 minutes. All right, and I hope you have your set too. And then again, when that alarm goes off, we're gonna stand, I'm already standing, so that'll be easy. So what's the magic movement number? So when we're talking about moving intentionally, let's kind of go back to define what, a, what movement is. Um, it's definitely a word that is used along with like fitness and physical activity and um, exercise. When I refer to movement, I'm referring to literally getting your body in motion. So again, it doesn't have to feel like this super structured, intense routine that was, you know, thought out by a professional and provided to you. No, movement is literally just bringing some movement to the body no matter where you're at. Um, and that's something that we can do easily and mindfully if we just practice it. So one way to start getting movement into your daily routine more is one, being intentional about your magic movement number. Does anyone know what the magic movement number is for the week? And I'm asking in regards to um, how many minutes a week should we be moving on average? Any? If you guessed 150 minutes a week of activity, that's just it. Um, or that breaks down to uh, two hours, two and a half hours a week, or you can break down even more to 30 minutes a day. So 150 minutes is the magic movement number. And this is something that you could see on uh, CDC's website and um, a lot of different studies have proven that 150 minutes of weekly activity or physical activity and movement at a moderate pace can actually help with preventing chronic diseases. So it's one step, pun intended, towards reducing your risk of um, diabetes, uh, heart disease, stroke. And moderate activity or moderate pace um, is something that you also want to be intentional about in addition to those minutes, because obviously we can move at a very slow, low pace, you know, nice leisure pace. But if we actually want to create some type of impact or really reap the benefits of movement, then it needs to be moderate. So how can you identify what moderate is? Well, there's the top test. So for example, if we're just out walking and I'm able to talk and sing, no problem, that means I'm, I'm moving at a low pace. Now, if I were to take it up by increasing my speed, I could even increase my intensity, maybe take an incline to where it's starting to challenge me a little bit. I'm getting a nice brisk walk, walk in, or I even take it into a run. Most likely I'll be able to talk, but I won't be able to sing, which tells me that I'm moving at a moderate pace. pace. And then anything above that, so if you're like sprinting where you can't talk or sing, then that's gonna be your higher intensity, which as we know, the higher you get, the more impact you'll have or the more things that you'll benefit um, from really getting your heart rate up, getting that blood flowing. So moving intentionally has a lot of benefits. The number one benefit that everyone loves and is motivated by is losing weight. And then there's lowering your blood sugar. So like I said in the beginning, movement 
can have a direct impact on your your risk of diabetes as far as reducing reducing your risk of diabetes. And this is because it helps to lower your blood sugar to make sure that your body is absorbing the sugar that's going into your bloodstream and using it as energy instead of storing it properly. So that way your body is functioning, your organs are functioning as it's supposed to. Whereas if you have high blood sugar levels, it's it, it's starting to store in the body and not being that blood sugar is not, or that glucose isn't being used as um, energy. So we wanna put that energy in motion. And even though our bodies are extremely smart, we still have to help us help it um, in order for it, it to help us. So uh, movement and is definitely gonna be helpful with that, but also you have better sleep and mood improved balance and flexibility, lower blood sugar and cholesterol, lower risk of heart attack and stroke, lower stress levels, more energy and stronger muscles. So there's so many reasons why moving intentionally um, is good. And I know that all of you, if not uh, most of you know these things as far as the benefits of movement, but let's talk about the real issue here, which is being motivated to move, being motivated to move. So even though we have like these cherries on top, as far as like the benefits, such as losing weight and lowering the blood sugar, it's the motivation part that is the, really the mountain that we have to climb to even get to this point to see these results. So when it comes to being motivated to move, I want you to keep it simple. Keep it very simple. Just easily identify, and you can do this right now, simply identify what are the things that I really enjoy doing that requires for my body to move. So that could be, um, I enjoy walking the dog or, I enjoy shopping that requires movement or I enjoy um, meeting up with friends and, you know, going to um, museums or things like that. Um, something that you might do every single day. I enjoy cleaning up that requires movement. So identify these daily activities that you enjoy doing and then just multiply it, <laughs> like just add it into your routine on a consistent basis until you get at least 150 minutes of that activity in a week. And then I would say after a couple of weeks of trying that, start adding new activities into it. So we don't want our bodies to hit a plateau by doing the same thing over and over. So we, we got to change it up or we have to diversify the way that we move. So you can start thinking of, okay, well, I know that I enjoy walking my dog um, and I walk my dog the same route every single day. And that route is really flat. So how can I change it up to where it challenges me a little bit more? So I'm walking at a more moderate pace and um, I'm just, yeah, feeling better. Well, identify a new route that has more inclines, possibly stairs, or a route that's a little bit further out of the way. So that way you're increasing your distance um, and then also your speed. There's so many ways that you could think of this. And there's a principle that I like to use that helps with identifying different ways that you could diversify your movement. So it's F-I-T-T, -T, frequency, intensity, time, and type. So as you see here, there's three different columns. There's aerobic, strength, flexibility, and balance. So these different, three different areas are the different um, opportunities for you to uh, really move, exercise, and get the benefits of it all. Um, you don't necessarily have to fit your physical activity into one of these categories, meaning you don't have to just commit to aerobic. Ideally, you would 
have a routine that incorporates all three of these categories. So you can have a nice balanced routine that's really focusing on all of these areas where you're going to see a lot of um, benefits from. So flexibility and balance, for example, as we get older, we start to lose our flexibility and balance. So this is definitely something that we have to practice. Um, strength. As we age, especially women, our muscle mass decreases rapidly. So we have to be intentional about doing strength training to make sure that we can maintain or build that muscle mass. And then aerobic. So this is related to your cardiorespiratory fitness. Um, we can easily fall into the trap of um, losing the, the impact of our cardiorespiratory fitness. So meaning like we're getting shortness of breath when we're doing short walks or climbing stairs or just any type of movement due to our lifestyle being so sedentary. So adding in an aerobic routine exercises um, into your routine will definitely help with building up your endurance and your stamina when it comes to doing physical activity. So that way you're uh, strengthening your heart, um, you're improving your breathing, which allows proper blood and oxygen flow to the brain. So that offers clarity um, and just helps you to stay sharp. So ideally we want all three of these in our routine. But when it comes to the FIT principle, um, first let's look at frequency. So you can change up the frequency for all three of these areas, as you see here for aerobic, um, it's about how often you're performing that exercise or that activity. So three days per week, and then you could take it up to five days per week. Um, walking is a great aerobic activity at a moderate pace. So in that zone two, if you do heart rate training, um, zone two and up. And then we have strength. So same with strength. If on average, um, you do strength training, say once a week, then try to change it up with how often you do it. So maybe uh, week one of the month, you work out, you do strength training once a week, and then week two, you go into twice a week, and then you alternate that. Um, and then flexibility and balance. This is also just how many days you're working on it. Honestly, I would include flexibility and balance training in every single one of your workout routines, um, and not even just workout routines, in every movement activity that you do. So if you're looking for a quick movement activity, such as when uh, our 28-2 rule, when that uh, timer goes off for us to move, and you don't have a lot of space or time to actually like move around, Tap into flexibility and balance. So just doing some stretches that will help you bring some movement to the body, help with blood flow, moving it around. Dynamic stretches are always best. Even some balance stretches, standing on one foot, kicking. There's a number of things that you can do there. All right, now the I is intensity. So this is how this is a matter of how intense your workout is, meaning how, how much are you challenging yourself? And the challenge looks different for each section. So for aerobic, that's gonna be more of like your pace. Um, are you moving quickly? Are you transitioning um, often and quickly? Moderate to vigorous. So vigorous is gonna be like high intensity interval training where you're doing like high impact exercises from jumping jacks to burpees and then quickly transitioning to a different high impact exercise and then doing that consistently with very little breaks. Strength training, this is gonna be about um, your reps. So 50 to 80% of one rep. Um, that's like the amount of, again, intensity um, of what you're actually lifting but then also how much, how many times that you're repeating that movement. 
Um, and then for your flexibility, so this is to the point of light to, to mild tension. So say if you are um, holding on to something that allows you to kind of pull, pull your body out to extend that stretch more. Um, so that's gonna be the level of intensity. So using like those yoga stretch bands to assist or even like grabbing onto something such as like a handle or um, a wall and then just kind of moving your body away to intensify that stretch. And then we have time. I got time. So for aerobic, it's just how many minutes um, you're performing that type of exercise. As you see, the magic number of the week is here under the aerobic section. So 150 minutes a week at moderate intensity. Breaking that up into 30 minutes a day. Now, I don't want you to feel like, oh my gosh, I got to carve out 30 minutes. I'm already struggling to carve out like 10 minutes to do something for myself. You can even break up the 30 minutes a day. So 10 minutes of movement in the morning, lunchtime, and dinner, whatever works. But I will say that if you want to get the most out of your movement and your um, fitness routine, try to keep those minutes nice together <laughs> within one session. So that way you can get the effects of getting your heart rate up and doing that heart rate training um, without like big gaps and big rest in between. And if you could literally dedicate 20 minutes of a workout in moderate to high intensity, you're gonna see um, great benefits after. Your body's gonna still be burning calories well after, especially if it's a high intensity workout. So that should be the goal uh, for aerobic. For spring training, five to 30 repetitions, three to 14 seconds per rep, one to three sets. There's so many ways that you can um, work with time when it comes to strain. Um, for our classes at Fit New, what I like to do is timed. So if we're doing like tomorrow is band camp, We'll use a resistance band and we do the amount of reps that we can complete within 30 seconds. If that's something that doesn't work for you, you can count out your reps. So and count out your reps and then also time it by how many sets you're going to do it. Flexibility. This is also about like how long you can either hold a static stretch so static stretch being you're not moving, this is a static stretch, um, or how long you're performing a dynamic stretch. So a dynamic stretch is movement with it, so one after another. Static stretches ideally should be performed at the end of your workout after you've warmed up your body and your muscles. Dynamic stretches should be performed in the beginning of your workout to warm up your body and your muscles. And then lastly, we have type. So this is where you go back to that list of the things that you enjoy doing and you get real creative on how you can diversify your, your activity and your fitness. So for aerobic, this could be dance aerobic. This could be um, just straight up a like jazzercise or aerobic cardio-based class. Um, this could be using cardio machines such as a bike or elliptical or a treadmill. You have a lot of options there with aerobic. And then strength. So this could be using your body weight. This could use uh, like external weights such as like dumbbells, kettlebells. You could um, get all of your muscle groups involved, or you can isolate your muscle groups and just target certain areas during certain sessions. You get to program it the best way you know how, and if you don't know how, come to a fit new class, I'll coach you through it. 
And then there's flexibility. So there's stretch, there's balance, there's yoga, there's Pilates. There's a number of modalities that you could tap into for stretch and flexibility or balance and flexibility. Um, at Fit Noon, we offer Get Loose. Every Tuesday and Thursday after our fitness classes, we always have Get Loose. It's a 30-minute um, restorative stretch class where we're really focusing on total body, but we kind of work our way from the top all the way down. And the stretch is our static stretch, hence why it's after our fitness classes. So if you want to just kind of start with something, um, you're not really ready to jump right into the fitness classes. You can start with get loose, but I do recommend coming in with your muscles warmed up a little bit. So maybe take a walk before. Okay. That is fit. And my timer says it's been 20 minutes. So if you've been sitting, please stand up. Please stand up. Now we're into the eight minute movement of the 28 two rule. So go ahead and stand up. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop it in the chat. We are wrapping it up. But um, I want you to take these, these, what, next few minutes to write out a plan. So now that you understand how you can move more intentionally, we already know the benefits of it. Um, Let's identify a plan that's actually going to work for you, that you're going to be motivated to do, and I want you to make it smart. Um, so smart being a combination of specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. And here we just pointed out like realistic, doable, specific, flexible. Smart also <laughs> applies to this too. So you can start to pull in um, the specifics of your movement plan, uh, add in that fit principle. So how often are you going to perform and then fill in the blank, aerobic strength, flexibility, balance, at what intensity, um, how many minutes or how many minutes are you going to perform it or how many reps, sets, and then what are you going to do? What is the actual activity going to be? So I want you to start from what you're actually motivated to do based on what you enjoy and then build off of that with the fit principle, okay? Give you all a second to work that out. And then when you are done, I'm gonna ask you to, since we're already standing, to bring some movement um, into the body. We're gonna do a quick um, movement break and I have my chair here. So I'm gonna show you some ways that you can move either in a chair or standing. So kind of imagine that you're like in a workspace scenario. You don't have a lot of space to go. Hey. All right, let's go into our movement break. I hope you got your plan down. Um, put that somewhere where you could see it tomorrow. So you could plan out your day, see it right in front of you in your workspace. Um, you could apply the same 28-2 rule where you set your timer on your watch or on your phone for every 20 minutes. You stand for eight and then move for two and then just keep repeating that throughout the day. Okay, so we're going to go into our movement here next. So just follow along the best way you know how. First, imagine that you started seated. So we're sitting in a chair. We need to move around a little bit. Start with the spine. Move it side to side. And seated cat cows. Breathe in and out, synchronizing that breath with your movement. Good. Now let's bring the neck around. 
the way you know. Good. Shake it out, shake it out. Bring those shoulders back and down. And forward. Swing those arms up in. Now let's add the legs, kick them up, reach for the toes, breathe it out. You might even start to feel your heart rate increasing. Good. I like to do about 10 reps of these before moving on to the next one. Good. Now let's plant those feet to where we can see the toes out. Come off to the edge of your seat. Let it come to a chain. Shoulders back. Head lights up. You did your head lights. And we're going to push up to the heels to stand, squeeze those glutes, and then sit back down the same way we stood up. Sit, stand. Good. Bringing some movement to those hips. Strengthening those thighs. And make sure you keep those toes out in front of you. Also notice I'm not using my legs to push me up and I'm not leaning. I'm using um, the strength from my heels coming all the way up to move my legs, bringing me up. And I'm not using my arms to press them up. Good, stand up and let's butt kick it. It doesn't take much, y'all. It just takes the desire, the will, the awareness. All you gotta do is have something in place to remind you to move, be intentional about it. I'm starting to get my heart rate up, which means I'm moving in a more moderate pace. So this is good. Good. All right, let's end it with a nice deep squat and big breath. Big breath in. Stretch it. Breathe it all out. And shake it out. All right, that's moving intentionally. Whoo, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it motivated you. Let me know what your biggest takeaways are. Drop it in the, in the comments. And hopefully we will see you next week for another diabetes awareness theme, habit therapy featuring guest coach Don Woods. And uh, it's gonna be on massage therapy, um, massage therapy to prevent diabetes. Long title there. All right, thank you so much. I'll see y'all, peace.